Jerry and Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have Phil Perea, the uh, author of Minute Dot, and the financial advisor, John Cameron, the author of uh, Rewire, Rekill, and Aristocracy, the forthcoming aristocracy, and uh, uh, a uh, development officer at uh, the Pacific Legal Foundation. Welcome to the show. Thank you. This is uh, a program that's on uh, <coughs> www.accesssacramento.org, on the uh, web, on Channel 17 in Sacramento, on YouTube, and on Facebook, among other places, uh, other uh, cable uh, organizations across the country as well. The Intelligence Advanced Research Projects Activity, that's a mouthful, uh, in other words, the spooks in the U.S., uh, the intelligence complex is recruiting bids for artificial intelligence uh, bids for better recognition of people in crowds in urban areas. My understanding is that you can pretty well fix out, uh, pick out a face in the crowd with existing uh, uh, facial recognition technology. Are they, are they going beyond that? Are they trying to recognize what you look like whether you have a beard or not or what? Well, you know, this is, um, that mouthful is a, re a relative of DARPA. Uh, which is also one of the uh, uh, original One of the defense. 17. Yes, uh, 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 the people that brought us the internet. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the, uh, you know, the question is how, how comfortable are we with a government that can track us each and every minute of our day? Can you say Big Brother 1984? Exactly. And, and the odd thing is, to me anyway, uh, because it terrifies me, uh, but, you know, the number of people that let um, Siri or Alexi in their home, I mean, that, that was right out of 1984. There is Big Brother. Um, and so it seems that people are comfortable with that. My only uh, hope is that there are, uh, that it is such a huge haystack that there is just simply no one to look at the information anymore. Uh, you know, you get to the point where so much data is coming in that how do you find the data you're looking for? I think the answer to that is through search. I mean, uh, Google has got all kinds of information nobody can possibly, uh, you know, go through all of it with a fine-tooth comb, but if you correct. want to search for something specific, if I want to search for you, I can find you in the nanosecond. Exactly, exactly. And so the question is, I mean, are, are we all going to be just trying to not be searched for? Uh, you know, say, keep our heads under the radar and uh, stay off the street and that sort of thing. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, and, and everybody can always tout the benefits and there are always, that argument is always the security. You know, we can, we can do this facial recognition, we can see, you know, we, we can have a million people walking the streets of New York City and we would be able to pick out that one person who dropped the backpack for you. Um, because that happens a lot, does it? Does it mean that we don't have to have as many as many patrol people on the streets? Not that we really do for that reason, but <coughs> uh, to me, the idea of having universal facial recognition, which is something that is already widely deployed in China, uh, it leaves you with, um, you know, if you step out of line, there is absolutely no way uh, that you can escape. There's nowhere to run or hide. They, you know, the minute you hit a public street, you're, you're toast. Uh, and so these are scary times. I think that we actually already do have that capacity. Uh, and this is really a way of saying, okay, get ready, public, because we're going to start to tell you that we're using it. I think, uh, I think this uh, brings up, reminds me of so much of, of uh, what's happened from especially about 1970 on, there's a guy named Robert Heinlein. Oh, gosh, yeah. And uh, in, in his books, uh, you know, he did future history stuff. There was, there was a place where people didn't leave the house and, and unless they had, like, body armor on and, um, you know, the, a, a gun. And, and these were all illegal because the state wouldn't let you have it, but people knew to protect their lives. They had to have all these things before they left the house, you know. People wear kilts because it was easier to get at their, their concealed weapon rather than get it out of your trousers and, and all sorts of stuff. And I'm thinking what will happen is if this happens, it will be uh, interesting to see if the next fashion statement is actually masks. <laughs> so people leave their house and they put on a mask. And you know, high fashion. There was mask. a movie about that, I think, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. uh, about some, some guy from back in the Middle Ages that uh, inspired a. Uh, a mask look. Uh, what's, what's the name of that? A uh, man in the iron mask. 
Uh, I don't know. But so it, I think, you know, in, in Zorro. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the uh, uh, V for Vendetta thing yeah, and all the yeah. rest of that. So the, the question would be uh, if, if this is, uh, you know, people really are concerned with this, there's a simple solution. Just the next fashion statement for people who, who uh, don't want to be part of the Big Brother complex. It was just a, a nice artistically inspired mask. It'd be a fashion statement. You could have many of them to coordinate with your whatever suit. And the minute you go into a building where, unfortunately, in many buildings in the country, you're under surveillance 24-7 anyway, maybe you have a different mask for indoor. Yeah. <laughs> but what the, the thing about intelligence countermeasures and um, and recognition, all the rest of that is not. I'm not concerned about if you do something wrong. What I'm concerned about is the deep state, with all of its hidden and and self-created uh, regulations and rules, that you can't fight because you you have to go to their courts uh, rather than a, a court of your peers uh, first before you can you know file an action in a regular court. Um, and there's more and more and more regulation. You know, I mean, pretty soon the FDA could uh, could decide that uh, that smoking within you know 15 feet of a child is is a, a attempted murder or something, and they could just you know, or they could they could regulate it with a fifty thousand dollar fine, something like that. And so it's not necessarily if I if I you know take someone's purse or or if I rob a bank or whatever, it would allow people to find me. But it's all these, uh, what, it, what is that book, uh, Three Felonies a Day? Yeah. I yeah. mean, basically, and then since everyone is guilty of breaking a rule that should require a fine or a jail sentence or a slap on the wrist, then who's going to decide um, Which who's, ones get who's prosecuted? pursued? Well, and what will happen is good. those people that work for Big Brother will be the ones not prosecuted, but the rest of us who, you know, in, in commerce. I, will, I, I, I won't forget that um, uh, when, they, when Julian Assange was causing such problems with WikiLeaks and everything uh, and was holed up there and um, I think at the time, I think it was, you know, uh, Sweden or, uh, but in any case, Holder came out and said, well, we don't really have, where they were trying to extradite him and uh, 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 Eric Holder said, well, you know, we don't really have a crime for well, him yeah, yet. Yeah, no, the, 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 the well, only crime we'll, they could we'll come up one. with was hacking. Yeah, we'll find one. Hacking, try, attempted yeah. hacking is the crime they finally came up with. But he didn't uh, do the hacking. And this is an example of you know what you what with, you bring up as they with, say uh, conspiracy uh, to think logically, conspiracy to inform the American people yeah. of gross violations of constitutional law. Yeah, no, I mean it, it's it's a, it's a yeah. travesty. Yeah. Uh, but you know, San Francisco's figured out how to stop it. They, they're just going to ban facial recognition technology used by police or by the government. How's that going to work out? Do you think, uh, John? Well, I think uh, what do they say? Even a, even a blind pig finds an acorn every once in a while. I mean, San Francisco is is guilty of very egregious violations of property rights and, and uh, right of uh, personal freedom and freedom of speech and and all these other things, and protects you know behavior on the part of some of its citizenry. I don't even know if they are citizenry. Homeless population that is that is obvious uh, misdemeanor and sometimes felony. Um, yet in this uh, one instance, uh, I think it's a heck of an idea. I mean, uh, a free people, um, you know, monitoring people's actions just in case they do something wrong. Minority is, Report. There's huh? another movie that, yeah. that kind of right. is. Uh, um, it's it's just it's uh, it goes against the American way. At least the way our if if you told our four our forefathers the people that wrote the Constitution, yes, we still do have a Constitution, ladies and gentlemen, um, that um, the, the government to, to keep people safe was going to monitor their every activity, listen to them talk, you know, once you explain the cell phone to them, um, that uh, uh, the, the way they communicate and, and socialize was uh, going to have a back door to where government agencies could could monitor their every act and who they're associated with and what their likes and dislikes were, they'd be appalled. So I think, um, you know, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Um, and, and I think, um, I think other cities will follow suit. You know, I think we'll it's, see. it's a wonderful we'll see. thing. Uh, when it comes to uh, the use of technology, it's okay 
evidently it's okay if the government spies on us, but if uh, a private company or a private individual decides to spy on us, or another country, heaven forbid, tries to spy on us, Katie bar the door. And the uh, most recent example was the arrest of a, a high executive in the Huawei uh, company, as well as the Trump administration issuing an executive order just in the last few days saying that uh, the Chinese tech giant Huawei uh, cannot operate effectively, cannot operate in the United States. Um, Philip, what's your thought on that? Well, first of all, it's a giant company. I mean, it's something like the seventh largest tech company uh, in that in its space. Uh, it is the equivalent, of the Chinese equivalent of, let's say, Cisco Systems. In other words, it's all the backbones of how uh, information and data is passed, uh, the routers, the switches, and all of that. And I mentioned uh, that. Big in 5G as well. Uh, and they're going to be huge in 5G. Uh, and there is something to what's going on. Uh, Cisco Systems, as a matter of fact, uh, got busted. We were embedding spyware in Cisco Systems, which was ubiquitous throughout the world, the largest uh, switcher router backbone internet company in the world. And we were embedding spyware in it, and Cisco was sending it out everywhere. And once that came to light, you know, Cisco just, you know, uh, had a real tough couple of years. He said, oh, we're not using your stuff uh, all around Europe. Um, and so uh, Huawei has the same reputation. Uh, so it's not just the U.S. And China, of course, you know, the biggest gripe against China in this whole terrorist spat is um, intellectual property rights. So China is not averse to stealing. And um, Chinese companies, you know, uh, across the spectrum, uh, we say they're state sponsored, but the fact is our major companies are state sponsored as well. well and so there isn't the as much a distinction as we'd like to believe. I think. But it is. Well, when, maybe you're right. When you're talking about now, especially um, you know, with the the cloud computing, where a massive amount of data, an exponential amount of data, is able to be stored, and here you have one of the largest companies in the world, who, as you say, is a leader in this um, 5G technology, which is just hitting now. Uh, as and since you mentioned that, the leader in that across Europe in terms of the telecom side, um, Vodafone, announced about a week ago. Uh, that they had uh, were um, introducing the Huawei technology, and they found the back door. Uh, so indeed, this is happening. So there was a back door in, in there. Hawaii. Absolutely yeah. was, and um, so uh, Vodafone is the UK equivalent and Europe European equivalent of, let's say, Verizon or AT and T, uh, and we're talking about a huge company uh, who will be the leader in 5G across the UK and Europe, uh, and they're saying, uh, no, no Huawei, no Huawei. <laughs> so no way, indeed, Huawei. There is indeed something there. Well, okay. Yeah, and, and the, what, what's interesting is um, that the, the, how they, um, when they found out in some of the circuit boards, people actually started looking at them and said, well, what the heck is that chip? That's not part of the specs, you know, of, of the circuit we ordered from Huawei. And what what is what does that do? And and uh, why is it there? Because it's not you well, know, necessary it, for the operation of it. And then they found out it was ba you know basically a, a, a backdoor <coughs> into communication systems. And you know the idea that this is shocking to us um, that that we didn't think you know. And I'd forgotten about the the Cisco history because. You know, Cisco is uh, is faced up and up and down ups and downs with competition and everything else. But um, when you think about it, governments uh, you talk about government sponsored um, you know government sponsorship here. You know, there there are some some pretty heavy rumors that uh, a lot of the the major players in the um, in the internet world, perhaps Facebook, perhaps Google, perhaps. Um, certainly had some some seed money come from uh, a an, an unmonitored government source that had interest in intelligence gathering from the beginning, and and you know a lot of people are saying that right from the beginning, 
uh, in their growth is people thought, oh, this is wonderful. I can just type in words on a computer and find out whatever I want. That that you know our government uh, was sitting right there looking at, at all that going on. And so. one of the interesting things about it is we think of you know hacking the Defense Department. That's not the way it's done. Uh, what where all the hacking is happening is at the most bizarre level. Maybe it's a maintenance worker that comes in and. Uh, writes up their report on the work that they did, and that actually gives them an entrance that they hacked that that report, that low-level report, and that's their back door into the Defense Department. Um, one of the things that I just find hugely interesting is um, Amazon. We think of Amazon as a retailer. Amazon reported its uh, last quarter fifty-three billion dollars in retail revenue, one billion in profit. Seven billion dollars in data gathering, two billion in profits, and it's announced that it's opening a plant right next to the CIA building. What do we think is going on? Because <laughs> yeah. okay, they're okay. Okay, when we do it, not so much when the when when they do it. <laughs> well, exactly. the cloud, the cloud, uh, you know, Amazon. Their cloud operation is huge. I mean, that is because it's, they have it's the it's a tiny tiny slice of their revenue. It is virtually all of their profitability. And they just announced that they're opening a headquarters in, uh, uh, in Northern Arlington, next to the CIA building. I'm shocked by that. Amazing, yes. Yeah. Uh, one of the, one of the cha changing topics, one of the, uh, the uh, go-to issues for the Democratic Party uh, going back for decades now is Roe v. Wade and the danger to Roe v. Wade posed by uh, conservative red states particularly in this in now Georgia and now Alabama. Alabama has passed uh, an anti-abortion bill which would uh, put doctors at risk of 99 years in jail for performing an abortion. Meanwhile, the rapists would, uh, would go free, is, is my understanding. Uh, in other words, it's a very, very stringent anti-abortion uh, bill. At what term? That would it, be at how many weeks? Uh, essentially zero. I mean, it's six weeks or less. I forget the exact terms for the... Uh, the Alabama, but it's it's basically a no abortion, and it's set up uh, in such a way that it is in, intended to be a statutory a challenge to Roe v. Wade at the U.S. Supreme Court. Going anywhere is uh, is the uh, is Roe v. Wade going to be overturned based on uh, this very stringent, very uh, uh, rigid law coming out of Alabama or anywhere else? Well, I don't know, and, and here's my uh, my issue. I, I I hang out with lawyers every day, and they they discuss the legal uh, finery. Not I I have conversations with with donors about justice rather than law. They the lawyers explain. They sit down, and I put on my dunce cap, and they get out the crayons and show me you know the law, and then I try to translate it into justice. And and um, some some very strong pro-choice, uh, brilliant attorneys that I know said that basically, um, maybe the what what happened with Roe v. Wade from their perspective was a wonderful thing, whereas the 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 pro-life attorneys, of which there are many that I know, uh, ardent pro-lifers, say say the same thing. Well, they say that the, the the law itself, the way the law was structured, the way it was written. Uh, it's just it's just bad you from a court legal decision. standpoint. Yeah. The, the, from a from a legal standpoint, it's on very shaky ground. I mean, it's not um, it's not sound from from a precedential standpoint. It's not sound, you know. Basically, the 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 judges who voted in favor of it, but it's because they like the idea rather than the law. So, unfortunately. It probably is open to legal challenge because of uh, the the uh, the weakness of its structure. Um, you know, then again, you you get into federalism and states' rights and and all the rest of that stuff. And does federal law, you know, generally the hierarchy trumps state law and and all the rest of that. But it's it's going to set up a fight. And um, you know, the the thing about a a. Uh, um, a challenge to a law, um, I, I think it was it was, it's a throw down. You're right. It's a glove slap down. It's a challenge. You know, I challenge you to an attempt to get um, the federal government to intervene so that they, in essence, have to 
Um, well, to get the Supreme Court to intervene. Yeah, the way it is me. right now, the yeah. Supreme Court would have to uh, overturn, uh, overturn a previous ruling, the, yeah. the, the, i.e. Roe v. Wade. Which are very stark decisions. They're, they're uh, yeah, very they're very reluctant to do. to do that. But recently, uh, a, a tax case involving a California resident who was trying, who, who, was, who was trying to avoid California taxes by uh, having a uh, uh, Nevada residency, his case uh, was was some some long-standing precedent was re reversed mm -hmm. by the Supreme Court, so that California could come after him for tax reasons. This is kind of being looked at as a, a precedent in overturning uh, long-standing precedent mm -hmm. uh, that would uh, pave the way for uh, Roe v. Wade to be overturned. Do you think there's anything to that? Well, I don't. Um you know the the whole idea that that you know judges are very hesitant to throw out um, previous rulings by the court because then they don't want their rulings to be challenged as well. But I I think this um, you know the idea of federalism and the idea of that we are a United States of America and and what people hate now nowadays the the electoral college and everything else was so that. Uh, individual states um, could be like little mini nations that that uh, California for example it wasn't then New York with its massive population back in in the day or or um, Virginia you know one of the most populous states couldn't impose its will on Kentucky so you know this um, well Kentucky wasn't one of the original well, 13 but say Rhode original, Island yeah but let's say yeah. one of one of the other ones Rhode yeah. Island I don't know that's it's late in the evening and I I forget about that ancient history anyway um, Richard remembers it but I I wasn't around I was around that yeah. <laughs> um, so this uh, you know paints paints a, a, a kind of a different future you can either you know, there's a couple of different approaches. The Supreme Court could basically choose not to take the case, and then because uh, they do that all the time. If there's an 99 issue, ninety-nine percent of the time. No, wait, actually more than that. Yeah. Uh, I think what 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 is it? Uh, three hundred cases for one taker, or three hundred. But a, a yeah. lot of those things are written by prisoners on basically toilet paper, so that doesn't count. But um, there's there's an awful lot of really good attorneys out there that are that are pro-life, and an awful lot that are pro-choice, and and the Supreme Court could, could Suffice decide. it to say, yeah. this is a live That's issue good. and will continue to be for Yes. Well, I'm for killing it the time. way I'm talking, but the issue is live. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Okay. Yeah. Medicare for all. It's the, uh, it's the uh, calling card for just about every Democrat running for president. It uh, started with Bernie Sanders and it's gone, uh, essentially gone viral until people actually figure out that Medicare for all, let me see, Medicare as it exists right now is paid for by both senior citizens, people who are receiving Medicare, they pay tax, as well as everybody else pays a Medicare tax for their entire working career. And still, it's going broke with only a small percentage of the population receiving Medicare for all. How in the hell is Medicare for all going to have any chance of paying, being, being you know, fiscally viable if it is in fact for everybody? Well, Richard, you are you are forgetting that this new monetary policy, oh, this modern new monetary modern theory. monetary theory that they've come up with, really just throws fiscal responsibility out the window. As long as you know they can print money or or you know put the ones and the zeros in the computer where all money is kept now, and and taxes are paid. Who cares? They can just well, print the money. Okay. So modern, yeah. modern monetary theory. There's a real simple way of explaining that. Monetary theory, the way it's done right now, is the Federal Reserve lends money into existence. With modern monetary theory, the Fed would be eliminated. Congress would simply spend money into existence. Uh, same effect, inflationary, except that the inflation would probably be more in consumer goods rather than in uh, asset values, which is which well. Is back right to now. back to the serious answer to the question. Um, it's uh, you know, very few. People in politics actually keep the promises they make, and uh, the you know uh, uh, President Trump is one of the few that is going down his list of campaign promises and trying to check them off. And people hate him for that because everybody knows that politicians aren't supposed to try to keep their promises. They're just supposed to promise so they get elected and do something completely different. So um, I think 
Uh, we're going to, you know, the Tea Party had, had a run here in this country and had a lot of power, and that was the reason that, in many respects, that the new wave of Republicans were, were elected to Congress was because they were talking about fiscal restraint and, and high taxation and everything else. But um, you, you can't— I Those mean, days seem to be over. I, well, I, I noticed in the last election that the Republicans did not uh, retain the House. Well, no, but the, well, they they also didn't run on on a traditional Republican. They didn't say we're putting the line in the sand. Yeah, and they, we're not they, they, they ran on Trump as a more yeah. more immigration restriction and, yeah, and more yeah, tariffs, which yeah. is not exactly so Republican. So maybe maybe it's you know maybe it's time to go back to. And I'm not a big fan of Republicans or Democrats, but uh, I I I. You know, you can make promises, but if everybody knows you can't keep them, then will it get you elected? You know, at least uh, with smaller lies, uh, the people who vote for you can con themselves into believing that you can actually accomplish it. But this is such a big lie that, that we can have with the tremendous um, amount that we pay for current health care in this country, that we can somehow take that and apply it to everybody and they're not going to pay, or their company is not going to pay the ten thousand dollars a year in medical premiums you need to cover it, is just it's ludicrous. So it might, uh, yeah, I, <coughs> I, I I don't think it's going to fly. I think well, one thing it, that is, is also a gathering interest is uh, one of the Democratic candidates for uh, president, guy by the name of Andrew Yang. I'm not sure where the heck he came from. He's come out with uh, a proposal for universal basic income. Everybody gets. Uh, what, $1,000 a month or a couple thousand a month, I forget exactly mm -hmm. what the number is. But everybody gets something. Whether you're rich, poor, or indifferent, you get, you get your $1,000 a month. How's that going to work? Uh, uh, the idea behind this is that um, jobs are going away. We are, oh, all of our minute. jobs are going to be automated okay, the, away. Jobs are going away. That right. means that consumer demand is finite. People don't always want more stuff, right? Well, it I mean, means, the it idea means, is that it, jobs it, it's are going only, away. It's only those, uh, they can only consume what they can afford to spend, and if they don't have jobs, they can't afford to spend anything. That's sort of because all the jobs are going to be taken over by robots and, and that sort of thing. And uh, this has always been false as surely as, you know, the invention of the wheel. Sure, it did put... You know, it did put slaves put out of work. walkers out of jobs. Exactly. And so, you know, whether you could go right through uh, human history. Love spinning wheels out of, uh, out of jobs. You know, at computer, the computer age, did it take away some jobs? Yes, but look what it added uh, and, and the possibility that it added. Well, I do what I do because computers can, because computers allow me to do it. Uh, I can work all over the world and never leave my living room, basically. Um, and so that part of the argument is that we have to do this. It's false. Which is the, the basic love that argument which never goes away. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place on the Libertarian Counterpoint. Thank you very much for being part of the show. We'll see you again in the future. Thank you, Richard.